the last lab was when we looked at pressure versus temperature. Pressure versus temperature we know is a direct proportionality. As the temperature goes up, the corresponding pressure of the gas is going to go up. But today we're going to look at Boyle's law and we're going to look at pressure and volume and see their relationship. And here we know that as the pressure goes down for a gas, the volume is going to go up. This is an inverse proportionality and this is going to require more math as we go through it. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a soap bubble under varying pressures. So we're going to start out and watch what they're doing. So there's a little bottle cap sticking it in some soapy water and putting it underneath a um, a vacuum chamber here, which is going to change our pressure for us. We're going to pull out our tools up here at the top and get ourselves a ruler. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the diameter of the bubble as the pressure changes. So it's going to shift our ruler around and get the diameter as a function of pressure. Again, stop and go as you go through this so you can keep track. A little bit, so I've got a nice, big, obvious size of my bubble. I'm going to find the widest point. And here, at a pressure of 0.367 meters, I have a diameter of about 3.1 centimeters. Now your data here, you're going to put into your column. So our um, first variable here on our x-axis is going to be our pressure. Our units are going to be ATM. On the y-axis, we're going to figure out what we're going to graph here on the y-axis. Well, first of all, we know it's not the um, diameter, but let's start with that and see where we need to go. So if I have the diameter here with units of centimeters, I'm going to be able to take and I'm going to be able to record my data. So let's say I have 0.367 and I have a 3.1 centimeter diameter. I take the pressure go down and the, and the volume of this bubble go up. So at 0.248 atm, and obviously you're going to get your own points as you go through this have a diameter of about 3.6. Oh, let's do one more point so at least we can try to get a straight line. And this is going to keep increasing in size until in fact it gets quite big. So at 0.189 atmospheres, I have a diameter of my bubble 0.0 centimeters. And if I go down here, again, I can graph it. So if I've got pressure on my horizontal and on my um, vertical axis here, I have the This would work a lot better if I had a point 0.2 there. Put my point 0.2 in. When your graph looks like that, you know you messed your data up. And so I've got this. Now, if I continue to put data in here, what I'm going to see here is that that is not a straight line. And we really would like to have a nice straight line for this data. So we're going to have to figure out how to get a straight line. So we're going to need to realize that while we can measure the diameter of the bubble. That isn't going to give us the volume of the bubble. So you're going to have to continue graphing here until you go from diameter into what the volume of the bubble should be. Remember here that if we're looking at a sphere, which is what this is, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so use that information to get the volume. You can add at any point more stuff you need, so you can take and insert a column to the right, and let's say I wanted to do the volume. And if I wanted to do this, I can actually take and calculate my volume, or I could use the um, calculator in here to do the volume. I'm just going to go ahead and do it on my calculator. And if I take and I do that, then in here, put centimeters cubed, I can take and calculate the volume. And once I do that, I will can generate a new curve. Now that's still great, but that isn't still that still isn't going to work either because pressure is not directly proportional to volume. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So you're in fact going to need another column here on the right, and you're going to need units of one over the volume. And when you do one over the volume, and again taking the inverse of what's in your volume, remember here that your volume is four thirds times pi times r cubed. So if you do that for your volume with units of centimeters cubed, you're going to get the volume for this nice sphere. What you're going to need here for your 1 over v is you're going to have units of 1 over centimeters cubed. So make sure you realize that pressure and volume are inversely related. And when you do that and you go through and you graph this, you're going to find a nice linear relationship with pressure 
and volume.